Hey, thanks for joining us. My name is John Mitchell, and I'm with Darren Root. We are with Root Works, and um, you're on our podcast set today. That's why the hanging mics is, and all of that. This is yeah. where we we hang on a regular basis to to do the Better Everyday podcast. Just so. finished recording one. So we this did. Is fun. So we thought we would um, for into its YouTube page. We would just um, talk to you a little bit about the way that we see uh, a, a modern accounting firm and probably won't be surprised by the categories that we're talking about here, but we'd like to think um, a little bit differently about them. Yeah, I think that, um, <clears throat> you know, what we're calling a modern modern firm today is, is, a, is a firm where the firm owner has changed their mindset and decided to think a little differently. Yeah. Or think again about the way they, they do things. Uh, and what, what we see as a traditional firm or, you know, a conventional firm, if you will, is is somebody that opened up their practice and kind of does whatever somebody needs them to do. Yeah. Uh, no matter what that is. And they try to grow that and they add staff to that and it gets more complicated over time and they get more stressed over time uh, and they get to some degree burned out. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the traditional firm route. And what we want to spend some time talking about today, John, is just uh, what... If you were to do this again, if you were to think about this again, and we're calling that a modern firm, if you were thinking about this again, what would it be? Yeah. I like that we've we've been able to break this down into 13 items. I, I'm The design part of in me wants to make it 12 or 14. Yeah, I know. But it's 13. Yeah. Um, our 13 business model basics, which are these things that we've identified are part of your firm that we need to just be very intentional about instead of just doing them the way they've been done in the past. I think 13 is so that we're bucking conventional wisdom. There you go. Um, it's so a more we've, modern we've, number. We've decided to go <laughs> with 13. And and our listeners aren't going to find these to be, you know. Profound. You, profound. Yeah. But they are profound. They are. They can be. The way uh, we in, think in, about in an accounting firm, they are profound. Yeah. Um, what we're what we're really recommending is that an accounting firm run like other successful businesses, yeah. and so that's what we're going to walk you through. Yeah, so we we've broken down the thirteen basics into four categories: leadership, operations, products, and then experience—the experience your customer has. So let's talk about those again. So we run through those again. Leadership. Yep. So we have a broad category we're going to call leadership. Leadership. We've got operations. Yep. We've got products. Yes. And then we've got experience. Yes. So and when we say experience, we're talking about the con consumer, the customer the customer's experience. experience with you. Yeah. So when we talk about leadership, we talk about ideal clients first. It's the top of our yeah. list. So when we, we think about the 13 business model basics, they fall underneath Each one of those, of those four categories. Yeah. And so very, we're going to start by talking about ideal clients yeah. because that falls underneath leadership. And it's one of our very first um, business model basics. So ideal clients, if, if you look at the, the traditional firm, and I talk to firm owners all the time, the number of the quantity, the percentage of ideal clients that they think they have uh, <laughs> is usually somewhere around a third of their clients. So mm -hmm. meaning two thirds are not what they would consider an ideal client, but they're a client. Yeah. So. One of the questions I hear a lot is, how do you define an ideal client? Mm -hmm. And the question is, I don't know. How do you define an ideal? <laughs> I mean, what kind of client do you want to serve? Yeah. For me, it was somebody in the, the medical or the service space industry that wanted to buy payroll or bookkeeping or corporate tax yeah. uh, or business advice from me. So it was... It was the type of client that I knew how to serve, yep. buying the type of products that I knew how to deliver, taking my advice and paying me well for it. Yeah. So I had a list of what made up ideal clients. And the question that we like to ask firms is, what would it be like if everyone, every client that you had was an ideal client? Yeah. So you kind of, one of our first business model basics is just identifying in your client base yeah. what an ideal client is how many of your client base are ideal clients and how many are not? And what are you going to do about it? It's incredible the impact that that has. As, as simple as it may seem. Ginormous. It's, it's an incredible place to start. And it leads to the second part of the leadership issue, which is culture. We, we've all heard the buzzwords around culture. And that's part of my responsibility here yeah. at RootWorks is to quantify culture. 
what do we actually mean by this? And it starts with the environment that you set up for your staff, which is what, who are we bringing into this environment? Yeah. What kind of work do we want to do here? And if we're not intentional about it, it let's just be honest, it's, it's whatever comes in the door. And nobody is is feeling as though they get to do what they want to do and what they're best at doing. So your culture, we believe, is based on on four things. And that's it's promoting the idea of clarity. Everyone understands what their role is here and how they're doing. It's the idea of candor. Can I can I be um, honest about how I feel about my job and what I'm doing. It's the idea also of consistency. Can we keep this thing going and connection? Do I feel like I like the people I work with? And all of those things come together as ingredients in a healthy culture. And it kind of starts with what people are we serving? How are we bringing in human beings to interact with yeah. us on a daily basis? And, and what we're saying is that we want you to be intentional about yeah. your culture. Yeah. Which means you need to be intentional about those four C's that you just yeah. you just clicked off there. So again, we're under leadership and we've talked about ideal clients. Yep. And now we've talked about culture as our second business model basic. The next the next basic is is operations. The next overall category is okay. operations. So underneath leadership we have we have two business model basics. Yep. Right? Yep. That we just went through. So ideal clients and culture. Yep. And now we're at operations and we've got we start with client communications. Yeah. How do you communicate with your clients each day? Man, that's become so important. Uh you know, we're, we're, we live in a virtual world now. Yeah. So what is the methodology? What is the, the business model that you have around communicating with clients? How are you going to share information? I mean, are you going to drive clients to your website? Are you mm -hmm. going to email clients? Are you going to video conference with clients? Are you going to sit down with clients? I mean, having a business model, again, yeah. we're talking about business model basics. What is your business model around communicating with clients? not only your team, but your clients. And if you're not intentional about this, what you end up doing is communicating when something's an emergency yeah. or like when I have to have something or forgetting to communicate and your clients feel left in the dark and yeah. they wonder if they're getting their work done. So this intentional effort creates this peace in your firm. <laughs> like yeah. we know the rhythm we have for communication inside the firm. And, and the, the next part of operations, so you've got client communications and you've got security. Yeah. which is a growing issue and something that you have to be intentional about if you're going to be a modern firm. Very much so. Uh, you know, if you talk about vulnerabilities yeah. within an, uh, an accounting firm, um, especially a firm that has anything plugged into the wall yeah. that goes out to the internet, um, it creates security risks. Yeah. And so we believe a modern firm, one of the business model basics is, is to have a secure or have a culture around security yeah. where you're protecting information. I remember back in the old days, John, um, I always wondered, you know, I, I started hearing in the old days, let's call it 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I started realizing that Chase Bank and, and UBS and all these big institutions were really taking clients' information seriously. Yeah. And I was like, Wow, that's weird because I have all that information <laughs> sitting in that file cabinet right over there, and all we have is a small lock on the front door. Yeah. Uh, and since then, the world has shifted, and now we all have a, a responsibility uh, to secure the information that's entrusted to us yeah. and to communicate securely. So, yeah, it has to be one of the business model basics. Absolutely. And you're not on your own. The good news is there's a lot of planning out there already been done and a there lot of investigation. So um, the third part of operations, we've got client communications, we've got security under operations, and then we've got practice management, um, which is a term we all know really well. Um, involves software. It involves the way you, you expect, expect your, your staff to you know, be communicating and be inside your practice on a regular basis. Yeah, I think um, as a business model, you know, a, a, the question is, what's your business model around practice management? Yeah. And, you know, some of those questions are, what, what do we want to measure mm -hmm. uh, in there? Do we want to measure our staff having their butts in seats <laughs> and being there all day long? Do we want to measure productivity? Uh, do we want to, and, and, 
again, realize that these different business model basics overlap. So yeah, they do. do you want to create a, a culture of freedom? Well, that has implications on how you want to manage your practice. Yeah. Um, I want to t- throw out a term underneath practice management that I think is super important today, and it's client intelligence. Yeah. So how do you want to manage the information that flows around your firm? And, and you might be asking yourself, what information are you talking about? Well, um, what clients are, are using hosted QuickBooks versus uh, QuickBooks Online? Mm-hmm. Uh, what clients may be using Bill.com? What clients are partnerships? In those partnerships, who has buy-sell agreements? And yeah. if they have buy-sell agreements, are they funded with uh, you know life insurance? It's all this information that's swirling around your firm that needs to be captured uh, and then the insights from that information need to be surfaced so that you can execute on opportunities. So practice management is is way more in a modern firm than just tracking your time and sending out bills. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got leadership, which includes ideal clients and culture. We've got operations, which includes client communications, security, and practice management. And then we get into products. Ooh, this is the best. This one, this one's our favorite because yeah. honestly, there are a lot of people who never productize their services. They just yeah. do what walks in the door and they call it accounting or they call yeah. it whatever it is. So what we've done is broken, breaking it down into to really uh, client accounting, business tax, individual tax, advisory service, and payroll. So we, we are saying the majority of firms that yeah. we see are offering um, products around those five things. And what we're really advocating is, is, is looking at each of those business model basics. So what is your, what is your business model around your payroll offering? Mm-hmm. What tools are you going to use? What kind of clients do you want to serve? Uh, what... What product are you selling them? And then repeat that over and over. I mentioned earlier that each of the business model basics overlap. So ideally we want to sell the right product to ideal clients. Yeah. If we fill fill our firm with the right product, you know, that has systems and processes and the right technology and all that associated with it to the right kind of client, what impact does that have? on the culture of your firm. Exactly. These these are not independent concepts. Yeah, they all interweave. And man, every time I talk to to one of our members who's just starting with Rootworks, it feels like they've they're expressing a culture issue. It just it's stressful here. Everybody's angry. Everybody's and right. you start boiling it down and it's often because we are we haven't identified what we actually do here. Yeah. So all of a sudden we find ourselves auditing in in, in audit products that we would have never chosen. We just said yes because the money was good and it was an old client. And now we've created this anxiety. We have to become something we aren't. We have to pretend. And the products part of the of the business model basics give us this deep breath as a firm to go, this is who we are. This is what we do. Even when we go hire someone, we can go, how do you plug into our products? Here are our products. We hire people with those kinds of talents. Yeah, I think I think products, John, is is where... Um, where firms can really get better quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've often used the analogy that I can't walk into a Starbucks and order a <laughs> cheeseburger because um, I would create chaos there. Yeah. They, they don't have the equipment. Uh, they're not trained. Um, and so Starbucks has said, you know, we're not going to sell cheeseburgers. It's not on the menu. It's not on the menu. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Don't come here if you want to buy a cheeseburger. Right. Or if you want to buy a Diet Coke. <laughs> exactly. Right? Don't come here because that's not what they sell. Yeah. And yet Starbucks is as busy as they can possibly be. Yeah. Right? So what we need to do is figure out what we want to sell. Yeah. And then we need to deliver, figure out the delivery systems for that. And all the also, the and this is a big part, the sales enablement materials mm-hmm. that you need. So just imagine for a moment that... I, uh, I have a payroll product, I have a sales presentation, uh, maybe we, you would call it an education presentation, but when the, when the client comes in or I'm on Zoom or something else with that client, I can pull this presentation up and I can walk them in, through exactly how we deliver that payroll product. Yeah. And at the end of that, I can send them a digital 
um, engagement letter or proposal that is beautiful that they can sign and get mm-hmm. me their payment information. And I'm, I'm ready to operate as opposed to the old method of doing this was somebody comes in and says, boy, I really could use somebody to do my payroll. <laughs> right. You're like, huh? How do you want to do it? Yeah. You know, do you want paper checks? Do you want direct deposit? I mean, what do, what do you want? Yeah. Um, so two different ways of doing this. A modern firm is a firm that sells the products that they've designed with an end-to-end process to selling and delivering those products in a consistent way. And we we talked again about the five business models that we we want a modern firm to design is their their payroll, their individual tax, um, their business tax, their client accounting and their business advisory. And business advisory is where, you know, it's it's kind of a big area. But remember I mentioned in practice management, if we if we have this concept of client intelligence where we have a place that we're gathering all this client intelligence. Yeah. And we surface that information to the top, that essentially drives our business advisory products and what we sell. So we get to be proactive, which is the word that we're using. Having information is what leads from being just a reactive firm, doing what somebody asks you to do, to being a proactive firm. Yeah, which is what I expect in a modern experience. And that's that's our fourth. I expect if I'm going to be a customer inside a modern company, I expect for you to reach out to me. Yeah. I expect for this sense that you you kind of already are anticipating what I need and you've got something to sell me. And I know, I understand the parameters of it immediately. So we've got leadership, which we talked about, operations and products. Our fourth category is that customer experience. It's that, and it kind of weaves everything together to provide something for the customer that they think of as modern. And it starts with, with web and mobile, really. Yeah, so uh, again, our, our next business model basic, and I don't know what number we're on now, but we're probably on 11 or- Something like 10 or, or 11, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and we say web and mobile. Yeah. Uh, you and I have been talking more and more about this concept of online presence. Yeah. And um, most, I wouldn't, it's almost all people yeah. <laughs> experience your firm today from an online perspective. Yeah. And so web and mobile, a modern firm has a business model around how they want to deliver uh, and educate people through web and mobile. Yeah. Deliver their services or educate or market or whatever they want to do. Uh, And that's a, it's it's an incredibly important piece of growing your firm and, and, and becoming a modern firm today. And it's part, it is definitely the heart of your business model. This ought to be a place where your customers come to do business with you. They ought to be able to pay their bill. They ought to be able to do things. It's no longer okay to be a, a digital brochure yeah. for your company. It is the place to do business. Again, um, these business model basics don't live in a vacuum. Yeah. So depending on the kind of clients that you want to get, yeah. ideal clients, the kind of products that you want to want to sell, all these other business model components come together to get presented outwardly through your web. Yeah, and that becomes the place that your clients do business with you. Yeah, and when you get all of that right, marketing and sales, which is our our twelfth of the thirteen business models. Yeah basics, marketing and sales become a byproduct of the things you've already created. It doesn't feel like an overwhelming task to, yeah. to sell some because you've created the products, you know how to talk about them, and you know where you want people to go, your website, in order to, to have that initial reaction. Yeah, you need a business model around how you want to grow your firm. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what we've learned is that the vast majority of growth in an accounting firm comes by referral yeah. and from within. Mm-hmm. So it's it's having the right sales and marketing strategy yeah. to grow existing customers and to grow referrals. Yeah, um, you know, most small accounting firms that I know of can't blast out emails across the country and grow their business. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't seem to work that way. So we want you to have a business model around growing the two key components again from within your existing customers. Starts with client information, client intelligence, so that you can sell more of your products that you've designed and going to your referral sources and telling them what kind of clients, 
who your ideal client is and what you want to sell them. That's really uh, the heart of the business model basic that is sales and marketing. Yeah. And then, then our final business model basic is client onboarding. It, it's the beginning of your relationship with your ideal client. What yeah. do you want this to look like? When, once you have all your other business model basics figured out, the question is, how do I now want to bring a new client? What's that experience like bringing them into our practice yeah. and having a system, a model that is, is, has been well thought out yeah. from end to end. So we've just now went through 13 business model basics. So you, you go through these things, Darren, and I think the thing I love most about this is that it puts the emphasis in the right place, and that's on human beings. We know what kind of people we want to serve. We know what experience we want them to have. And then we create an environment for our staff that is based on a place you want to work. We know what we're doing. We know how, to, how we're delivering it. Yep. And it becomes a place that you love. If you're a firm out there and you're saying, I don't know where to start or what to do, uh, I, I, I want to evolve. I want to become a more modern firm. What we would say is you start with the 13 business model basics yeah. and you work your way through each one of them. And, and really, maybe it's just you with a pencil and paper yeah. uh, writing out what it is that you want out of your firm through each of these different business model basics. Yeah. Hey, thanks for being with us today um, to go through these 13 business model basics. That was quick. Um, we went through them really quick. Yeah. I appreciate you being with us.